Hi everyone, in this video, we will be going through the process of creating this photo manipulation, which is a part of a project that I worked on a few months ago. The project included another scene for which I created a separate video that's now also up on the channel, so feel free to check it out. Aside from that, I have also combined both pieces into this cool uh, parallax looking transition and I will let you guys decide whether I should make a tutorial on how this was made. So do let me know if you're interested by giving this video a like and I promise you guys if we reach 1000 likes on either one of the chapter videos, I will make the transition tutorial. Alright, now let's open Photoshop and start editing. First of all, create a new document. So go to File, New and let's set the dimensions to 2000 by 2500. You can still export in a smaller scale later on but this aspect ratio is perfect if you plan to post your artwork on Instagram as it fills most of the feed. Also, the resolution is high enough in case you want to use the edit as a screensaver. And by the way, if you'd like to play around with the PSD files of this project, you can find it now on my Patreon page. And if you do join in, you also end up having access to all of my exclusive content that I upload there. So yeah, make sure to check it out. Okay, so now let's give the document a name and click on create. Now let's start by importing this field image which I got from Unsplash. By the way, you guys can find links to all assets that I used here in the description box below. I get most of them from uh, Unsplash, so I don't have to worry about any copyright related issues. So basically here I'm resizing and repositioning the image to my personal taste. I want to get more focus on the section where the sun is more visible. It makes it look really dreamy, which is the look I'm going after. And of course, don't forget to give your layer a proper name as well. You can do that by double clicking on the layer name and that's how you can change it. After that, import the cloud image. It's completely up to you whether you want to add elements to your scene. I personally feel like adding a cloud uh, element to the sky will give my composition a little bit more balance. Once positioned properly, let's rename the layer. Now I want to remove some parts of the image, mainly around the cloud. So let me create a layer mask by clicking right here. So the reason I'm adding this mask instead of editing on the layer itself is so I can have the ability to restore erased details if I need to. So to start erasing, go ahead and select the eraser tool. You can change the brush size by holding Alt left click and moving your mouse left and right or up and down to change the hardness. So as you can see here, I'm using the eraser to remove parts of the image which I don't want. And if I ever make a mistake or change my mind, I can simply change to the brush tool and start drawing again to restore erased parts. Now for this to work, just make sure that your foreground color is set to white and the background color is set to black. All right, so now let's go back to the eraser tool, bring the opacity down a little bit. And what I want to do is start erasing around this area to reveal the mountains back. I'm mainly trying to make sure that the clouds image blends in pretty well with the overall environment. And to finalize, you can also bring the layer opacity down just a little bit. All right, now that we're done with the background, let's bring in the astronaut image. Scale it down and position it in the center. Give it a descriptive name as usual, and then go to select subject, which will automatically draw a selection around the astronaut. You will see that it's still not perfect, but we can go ahead and apply the mask anyways. And using the same technique I went through earlier, which allows us to restore parts of an image, the same thing can be applied here. So there are parts of the image that I don't want to keep yet the select subject feature included. So we can use the eraser tool to get rid of that. Equally, there are other parts of the astronaut which the select subject feature missed out. So you can still bring those parts back by selecting the mask and using the brush tool to draw around the edges 
that's how you can restore those details. So spend as much time as you need on this step to try and refine the edges so you can isolate the subject properly. All right, great. I think mine looks really good already. Perhaps I'll move it a little bit upwards to emphasize on the floating effect. Apart from that, I think it still looks a bit dark compared to the rest of the scene, which is pretty bright. So let's go ahead and add an exposure adjustment layer, right click on it and choose create clipping mask to make sure it only affects the astronauts layer. And let's bump up the exposure a little bit. And of course you can play around with the values here until you achieve the look that you're after. And now it's time to bring in the butterfly images. I have five ready to use images, so I'm gonna try to place them randomly around the scene. Now, of course, having different sizes creates the illusion that some of them are closer to the camera than the others. So that's a cool trick you can use to add some depth to your scene. Let's duplicate this one to add another butterfly as this area still feels a little bit empty. And since it looks identical, I will just go over here to edit menu, choose transform and flip horizontal. All right, great. I'm happy with the distribution of the butterflies. Now, naturally these butterflies will be flying around. So let's try and give them some motion blur. You can do that by going to filter, blur and motion blur. You can also add Gaussian blur to elements that are closer to the camera as if they are a bit out of focus. You can apply the same thing on the remaining butterflies. So just make sure you give different values each time. This way each of them has its own unique look and properties. Now you don't have to apply those effects to the one on the center. Let's just assume that this butterfly is hovering around our subject in much lower speed. Hence the motion blur isn't so high. Maybe let's make it a little bit smaller. I don't know about you guys, but I've never seen a butterfly this big before in my life. Actually, one thing I forgot to create is the astronaut's shadow. So to do that, let's go ahead to the clouds layer, which is right below the astronaut's layer in my project and click here on this icon to create a new layer. Let's call it an astronaut shadow. Now select the brush tool and let's lower the opacity to somewhere around 50%. Downscale the brush. And maybe you can reduce the hardness as well. And now you can start uh, using the brush to paint around Maybe let's also bring it down a bit and change the blending mode to multiply. Now switch to the eraser tool, decrease the opacity, bring the hardness down to zero. And now start erasing around the shadow area to make it softer and add some feather around the edges. And now we have a shadow. If it still looks harsh, you can simply reduce the layer opacity and that should fix it. We're almost done. There's actually just one more thing I want to add. You see the front part of the astronaut's helmet is actually made out of glass, which should be a little bit reflective. So in my case, we should see this butterfly reflecting on the glass. So let's select that butterfly layer and duplicate it. You can do that by either right clicking, choosing duplicate layer, or you can hold alt and drag the layer down until you see a blue line. And now you have an identical copy. Let's just rename it properly and press control T to transform and drag it over to the reflective area. I think naturally it should be inverted. I hope I'm doing this right, but I imagine it needs to be mirrored. So let's go to edit, transform and flip horizontal. Now let's rotate it a bit like this. Okay, 
Great, now let's add a layer mask as usual. Select the eraser tool and start deleting the unwanted parts, keeping only the reflected section of the layer. So once you're done, go ahead to the blending mode and change it to multiply. Bring the opacity down a bit. Then let's give it a bit of blur as well because originally the reflections on his helmet are also blurred so we should always try to mimic how things work in real life to get our artwork to look as uh, natural as possible. Alright now actually the composition part is done. I think this one was pretty simple so all that's left to do is to color grade the image. Now as I mentioned before in other videos ideally you should continue that part here in Photoshop as you do have all the tools that you need. However I personally love to do it in Lightroom. I know it's probably not the best workflow but I'm really familiar with Lightroom's color adjustment tools. I've been using the software for so long um, so I use it pretty much for anything that requires grading. I'm not gonna go through how I do it in Lightroom. However, if you guys think that it would be useful for you to know how I grade my manipulations in Lightroom, do let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to cover it in more details in a dedicated video. Anyways, at the end of this video, I want to thank you guys for watching up until this point. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, then don't forget to subscribe as I have so many other videos like this one lined up. Other than that, stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.